You've already seen the faces of our guests. <laughs> but let's not mean to meet them. <laughs> well, let me now tell you what they're here to talk about. Is actually, it has to do with the rise in value of the Naira. You noticed in the course of the week that almost every day, the Naira was appreciating as the days went by. I mean, I think yesterday it was down to 1,100 Naira, or maybe even less in some places. About a week ago, I, I checked my one of my bank's um, um, app, up. and I saw that the Naira was exchanging for 1,180 about a week ago on a bank app mm. to the dollar. Mm. Wow. So the Naira is getting stronger. So everyone's joy. Even though our forex is, our foreign, what's that thing again? Reserve. Reserve, Reserve. Reserve. is also somehow. Small. Well, they said they've taken some out of it. Well, we uh, it's, it's gone down a bit, but um, that doesn't seem to be affecting the value of the Naira right now. Because the, the In fact, um, I read somewhere yesterday that the Naira was the top performing currency yes, in the world. Yes, yes. I mean, and I felt... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Nigerian. Please, I take a bow. Thank you very much. So, what are the things that have happened that have caused this race of the Naira to strengthen? We have with us in the studio this morning the former chairman of the NESG, the Nigeria Economic Summit Group, Mr. Buka Kieri. He's also the co-founder of Trans-Sahara Investment Corporation. Good morning and thank you for coming. Good morning. You haven't appeared physically in a long time. In a while, yes. <laughs> so we're very happy to see you with us in the studio. Uh, yeah. And we also have a lawyer and chartered accountant, our friend, Mr. Ulubenga Adewe. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. So thank pleasure you to be very here. much. Chartered accountant, lawyer, all rolled in one. <laughs> thank you. Let me start with you since we haven't seen you in a while. Mm. So what are the things that happened that suddenly caused this race of the Naira to become stronger? Yes. Big, um, big strong, and reliable. Or is it a magic wand? Uh, well, it's uh, YC's magic wand. Uh, by YC, I mean uh, the central bank governor. Oh. <laughs> uh, Yemi Kadoso. Um, he, he, uh, I, I think it's um, in the last two NPC meetings, they've raised interest rates by about 600 basis point, which is 6%. So, uh, and, and remember, he came into the office in September. From September until, is it February, MPC had not met. So there was no monetary policy intervention. Uh, and of course, the Naira, the, the, the scarcity of dollars, uh, all the other things, the ways and means that had been created by the former CBN governor, all of those uh, you know, conspired uh, to make <laughs> the Naira fall precipitously, especially in the early parts of the year. Now, the change that has happened with the first 400 basis point increase uh, and then subsequently another 200 basis point uh, should do two things. One was it, it's supposed to also bring down inflation, which it hasn't. Uh, the second is that the, um, there should be investments because what happens is that when interest rates are increased generally, monetary policy-wise, what you do is that you are mopping up liquidity from the system. And if you reduce the supply of Naira in the system, then the Naira strengthens. The second thing that is happening is that there would be propensity to invest. Sorry, Interest rates are higher. Just just one second. Yes. On the period, so when you, when you make the you said when you make the flow of the Naira less, you increase its strength. Yes. Wasn't that what the previous administration was trying to do? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. You see, it, it was not transparent in what they were doing. They were printing money and dishing it out to the government, exceeding even the capacity to borrow. Pause. That's the ways and ways means. means. Pause. Pause. So those ways and means means that over 30 trillion Naira 
was printed in the last administration I, I, I get that, I get that, that went into the system. I get that. And but that the, basically means that your currency is supposed to fall. And it hadn't. But the, the, the reason I'm asking is, yeah. they said that we had something in region three trillion plus in circulation and that was too much so they so wanted to bring it down so money in circulation is one thing okay money spent is another see so there are two things the basic economics says that if you want to compare your currency to another country's currency look at your inflation rates i mean this might be economics 101 so what do I mean by that? So if let's say we want to compare ourselves to the US, what's the inflation rate in the US? What's the inflation rate in Nigeria? Let's for the sake of this discussion, say the US is 3%, Nigeria is 10%. I know it's not 10%, I'm just saying that, right? <laughs> so there is a differential of 7%. That means assuming nothing else happens, every year our currency should devalue by 7% compared to the dollar. If, you, if it doesn't happen, it means that something is going on underneath. Either we are being more productive than the U.S. in terms of productivity. Or the ways and means. Or yeah. something else is happening. And if something else is happening, it will come back and bite you later. And that's what happened in the previous eight years. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Dewey, are we expecting to see this trend continue? Oh, yes. Um, it's going to continue for sh a short while because um, the fundamentals that controls exchange rate we've not addressed properly. Now, if you look at, a lot of people think we have more money. That's why, I mean, dollar in reserve. That's why Naira is uh, gaining. But actually what has happened is that um, one major issue, if you address in the country, you solve 60% of your problem, mm -hmm. and that is the corruption in that forex market. So if you recall the CBN governor, and I give it to these guys uh, for what they've been able to do, forward contract on foreign exchange, that um, obligation that central bank need to redeem, they discover that over $2.4 billion has no backup. Yeah. And so that alone, $2.5 billion is the total money we need to even do the new recapitalization <laughs> of all banks in Nigeria, <laughs> which is about um, 5 trillion naira because analysis says 4.7 to 5 trillion naira. So it means that if the CBN governor had been careless to pay 2.5 billion, maybe certain things will go under the carpet, he will take his own share, and then you discover that the central bank will have been the one paying people that will then come back to own the banks in Nigeria. Hmm. So, first thing wow. is the issue hmm. of eliminating corruption hmm. in that system. So, forward contract, you can't bring a fake paper and get money from money. the CBN. The second thing is the body language of the governor of Central Bank is showing people that are involved in over-invoicing and round-tripping that, look, don't go near this guy. You are going to be in soup. Because $2.4 billion that he declined paying is an indication that he was not going to allow all of such. So, what has happened is that in the last seven days, the foreign exchange market has become the buyer's market. And I had an experience yesterday with a client who wanted to purchase $5,000 from a bureau de change. They offered him $1,200 to a dollar. I asked him to ask other people Another BDC offered 1,148. Mm -hmm. And I assisted him to send message to those people that, sorry, we are not buying from you because your rate is too high. Too high. Don't bother to pay to the account. You know what happened? 30 minutes later, this guy said, no, I'm going to pay. How much did you say you got it? 
do 1,150. And I said, okay, this two naira is not a bad idea. Now, you purchase from this party and from that other party. What has happened is that those that are using it to trade and shortchanging the economy over invoicing, you want to buy something that is $1 million, you are bringing invoice of $10 million. The central bank is Ouch. now awake. I'm, I'm sure you are aware that 20 something human beings have been laid off and been removed from the central bank. 60, yeah, so 60, 60 exactly. now. Uh, yeah. You know, 60. directors. And they were not asked to go because uh, there's something. So the guy is cleaning up that place. And so those that are checking the invoices and the commercial banks are also waking up. Not only that, there is a policy that was rolled out in the last one week that says collateralization of loan with foreign exchange account, cash in your bank account, will no longer be allowed. You can use euro bonds. And so your money must translate to real economic activity and investment. Hmm. Not only that, the recapitalization of banks the, the banks with um, uh, international authorization will now be 500 billion. 500 billion is like 500 million dollars. And guess what? Those that will invest, they've started the activity of bringing money into the country. Banks with national authorization is now 200 billion, as against the 25 billion before. So this money are now coming in, and then banks are offering to sell dollar at a rate that is reasonable. At a time, reasonable. the black market, the black market was below the CBN mm -hmm. rate mm -hmm. in the last 10 days. Yeah. And that tells you that the CBN now look at it and say, look, the break-even point should not occur between CBN rate and the parallel market. So they came down. To 1,100. So in the next couple of days, you will see that the black market is going to come down to 1,000 naira. This money, somebody has said, oh, 1,075. So wow. that is mm. policy statement and cleaning up mm. and blocking the loopholes. The only challenge we are going to have mm. is that we are not matching the monetary policy with fiscal policy. We are gaining in terms of Naira value. Now you are introducing increase in electricity tariff. That is going to be counterproductive. Well, you know, the, 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 production we keep well, the, the, the minister did say that mm. um, if the Naira fell more, that the tariff would also drop. I pray so. Mm. You know, but you know, there's something, uh, you know, Mr. Kerry, there's something that, I mean, he just talked about the recapitalization of the Naira now. And of the banks. Of the, of banks. the banks. Yeah. It's, it's like too many things happening too soon, too yeah. quickly yeah. in the banking sector already. Uh, even though, as he said, you know, the bankers are doing what they know how to do best, gathering money and all of that. But at the same time, some banks are jittery. Shouldn't they be? Um, jittery, why? Um, uh, so, it's, You're what has happened? So you can understand what, 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 what has What has happened? They, they previously, yeah. my apologies, yeah. pre previously when banks recapitalized, some went under, some Correct. merged, and all Correct. of those things. Correct. So they should be jittery. Yeah, I mean, there are fundamental things. I mean, my, my, my friend here is um, an accountant. Technically speaking, with the recapitalization announcement, you could use retained earnings. The central bank clearly said, no do way. not use retained earnings. So there are banks today that could have just recapitalized, you know, like within that. a few weeks yeah. if you want, because mm. they have sitting profits they had made over the years that they have not distributed to shareholders mm. and they have not bought shares with it or whatever. So it's sitting as retained earnings. That technically, accounting wise, could be used to recapitalize. But the central bank said no. And the reason they said no was that looking at the bank's books, the net open position had effects.
And FX had some unrealized gains. Of course, by the end of the year, you have to book it as profit and it goes directly into your retained earnings. So they said, no, we want you to bring additional capital from your shareholders. Now, that would basically mean that there would be capital injection into banks, both the international and the national. The gaps are so huge. Now, that may bring in foreign investors or local investors. Either way, it's, it will strengthen the Naira. How? If it is local investor, then the Naira could go chase dollars, but it's now going into the banks as an investment. That means that there would be less Naira in circulation yeah. and more dollars in circulation. Therefore, the Naira would strengthen. Two, if they bring in FX, uh, I just saw one bank announcing $750 million rights issue. Um, that basically means that there would be FX flowing into the economy. Which that would need. also mean hmm. that there would be FX supply and therefore the Naira strengthens. The second thing which you know had happened in the last few weeks is that with the interest rate rise, there is also a lot of foreign portfolio investors that have come into the market. Most of them are coming in and buying instruments such as treasury bills. I mean, uh, the last I spoke with one of the investment banks uh, was that uh, treasury bills have gone up to 21, 22% one year treasury bills. Now this is the same thing that beginning of this year was around 10 or sub 10%. Mm. That means that people would bring in money. And, and another thing that I haven't yet seen data on, but it would definitely show, is diaspora Nigerians are bring, will begin to bring in more dollars into the market. It said it used to be around 25 billion, went down to less than 20 billion in the last two years or so. And this year, we should be able to breach that 25 billion or above. That's just a component. And if you think about it, diaspora Nigerians' remittances is higher than oil receipts. Yes. And, and so it should be looked at as something that the monetary policy uh, 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 entity, the central bank, should look at it and pay more attention to it. Whether you create bonds, longer term bonds and things like that, which I know countries like Mexico and others have done in the past. All of those would further strengthen the Naira, in which case the idea of saying the Naira technically could hit a thousand or even sub thousand Naira to the dollar is possible. But you also heard him say here now just a while ago that even though we are seeing activities in the monetary sector, monetary policies, but we still have a, a variance or disparity with fiscal policies. Correct. Now, 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 so, now, so is that an injurious uh, position? So, so there are two things. One is that even from the banking side, even on the monetary policy side, when you say, okay, bring in more capital, what would the banks do with that huge capital? Mm. The other thing we should also have in mind is that when the monetary policy committee sat and raised interest rates, they didn't just stop at interest rates. They also raised the CRR, which is the cash reserve ratio. Now, what that means is that as a bank, it used to be 32.5%. Now it's 45%. For every 100 Naira deposited by a customer, 45 Naira would be taken by the central bank. And you don't get any interest as a bank. When I first came to this country 20 years ago, it was around 10% or 12%. Today it is 45. That means that a portion of the capital that could be used to lend has been quarantined and it's not earning any interest. Now, that, after you've done that and then you now ask them to recapitalize, um, when they start releasing CRR, it will also have an effect on the liquidity position of the economy. So you have to balance things. Of course, the other culprit on the other side uh, is the fiscal side of the equation or exactly. the economy. And I know that the current central bank governor and the current minister of finance have had 
had been colleagues uh, a few years ago, or a few decades, <laughs> few? Uh, some decades ago, <laughs> and and that would make coordination much easier. You know, it's it's easier to deal with somebody that you know yeah. than someone that you don't. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, it's we 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 may be lucky there, and so there may be less fiscal recklessness, hopefully, um, and and there won't be too much spending. Or if there is going to be spending, it should be quarantined. Uh, it should be targeted towards real infrastructure that will add macroeconomic value we'll, we'll, we'll to the economy. We'll come back okay. to that one. But yeah. do you agree with okay. him? Yes, um, except mm -hmm. that, um, you know, when the CRR was raised to 45%, what the central bank was trying to do is to actually control um, majorly insider lending among banks and saying, look, depositors have their money with you. The money must be saved. What I can say, if the central bank and the federal government can engage more in inter intervention lending using the CRR, because you have the funds of the bank with you. On the other hand, the central bank can become guarantor to borrowers in the real sector, especially the MSME. That's what can complement what is happening, uh, you know, in the monetary policy, such that people have access to credit. Things like um, solar energy uh, support for MSME, where government can say, look, all banks, even if you say you don't have money, from the cash reserve ratio, we are releasing 15% out of the 45. And we are using this specific lending to help energy uh, generation. Such that with the banks that the, uh, is being created and tariffs changes, if you have alternative power supply, you have 5 kVA, 10 kVA, and you know that the solar panels, your inverter, the charge controller that is being given to you by the banks is something you can pay over five years. Then you have nothing to worry about. You can just tell PSD, uh, PSC and please go to hell. I have my power supply. So there mm -hmm. are certain interventions that need to come in. Now that people will not be able to afford electricity in some places, we need to look at that cash reserve ratio and say, can we take 15% chunk out of it and say, Banks, you are lending to this specific uh, sector, and then the central bank can be a guarantor mm. to that. I, I think one thing about the CRR is that, you know, it's one of the things that the current central bank governor did to clean up the mess that he found out. And what I mean by that is that the former CBN governor had something called DCRR, discretionary cash reserve ratio. Mm. So, so at the time, you know, those during those eight years or so, CRR was supposed to be 32.5%. But the effective CRR <laughs> has, for some banks, it had gone up to 60%. Mm. I know a bank that had even hit 100%, meaning that every Naira deposited, the central bank governor had taken it away from the bank. And then that thing about intervention or lending of that DCRR, in fact, they first introduced what they call special bills, which would make the banks earn about 2 or 2.5% on those money above the regular CRR. Uh, that didn't solve the problem. And then they then came up with the idea of if you're going to loan, lend, you can take a portion of that CRR and land. Still, on average, the CR, CRR was somewhere around 50% or higher. Now, the idea of bringing it to 45% and say, I will release some of those above 45%, but gradually, uh, or in the instances of some that have not met that, they would then be quarantining, would basically be fair, transparent to all rather than the word D, which was used discretionary, which was used uh, by the former CBN government. There's some value in the issue you raised about mm -hmm. lending to uh, 
the real sector, so yes. to speak. especially the micro, small, and medium enterprises. That will inject some um, capital into their businesses. Correct. And perhaps reduce some pressure that the number of people spend the spending power that people are having now. E correct. I think I think one of the fundamental things, and that's the structural part of our economy that need to be addressed. Um, having financial inclusion and having access to finance by micro, small, and medium enterprises is fundamental at affordable interest rates. Um, now, the, the pragmatic thing to do is to look at the entire system to say that let's solve the issue of security, let's help people go back to the farms and produce. Productivity is very important. Let's not have food wastes, because I saw somewhere recently that um, some of the homegrown foods are becoming more expensive than imported, similarly, similarly imported uh, foods. That is a very disastrous thing, if that is true. I mean, it was production. a spot survey that was done by one paper, I believe. But, but you know, so, so, so those need, fundamental issues need to be addressed. Um, I've seen people talk about price control. Let's not go, go there. It's unorthodox. Um, it can be disastrous. It would also bring in some other new agents who will come and take advantage of those situations. Um, however, the lending to micro, small, and medium enterprises, there are entities that have been established to do that, Development Bank of Nigeria, Bank of Industry, uh, Bank of Agri, etc., etc., the DFIs. The reason why the DFIs can do that is that they could actually lend in low double digit or single digit yeah. and which is uh, what the which is what industry. is needed to yes. uh, 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 catalyze the economy yes. such that more productivity comes in and therefore affordability of prices of uh, products that come out of those factories will then augur well for the economy long term okay okay mr Dewey, um how will this rebound affect import costs and inflation Oh, definitely. Um, on the average, cost of production will begin to go down because there are essential materials that you have to buy, regardless of what dollar is in the country. At one five, you're still buying maybe one million liter of something chemical in your industry. Uh -huh. Now, when CBN is now selling to you at one thousand one hundred. You are buying the same thing. So, on the average, it means that uh, from 1,500, you are gaining about 400 naira per unit of that item. So, it's a good step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, we need to look at what we call sensitivity analysis mm -hmm. in accounting. That as much as you are gaining 400 in the cost of your importation, you have to look at other factors because you have three lines in the graph. One is cost of other things. The second one is the exchange rate, mm -hmm. where you now have the prices of your goods. Now, you will not, there is no way pricing the respond to monetary policy like exchange rate, and we also respond to other costs, taking electricity costs, for example. So when Naira rebounds and it was coming to 1,100, you're getting at 1,075. Now some people will sell at 1,000. It is expected that on the average, cost of goods and services should go down significantly. Unfortunately, but when Mr. that Adair, graph yeah. wanted to go down, he saw electricity bill running after it. And so the graph doesn't... And you know, you don't want to wait. It's like a bullet coming to hit you. You just have to run. And that's why we may not experience too much immediate change in prices uh -huh. unless we address other costs. Mr. Ray, but you are aware that once a, a, a cost goes up in Nigeria, it is most likely not coming down. It, it, no it, matter it, what happens. It, it, it can come if we address both policies. I'll give you an example. 
I happened to be a distributor of vegetable oil at the time. We were selling for 6,500 a keg, and then suddenly it went to 8,000, 9,000. Because of that sudden uh, increase in exchange rate and then supply gap in mm -hmm. kegs that mm -hmm. they use mm -hmm. during COVID. And then after COVID, mass production began in some places, the price went down. And we started selling at 6.5. Of course, we had employees who took advantage of customers. Of course. And they continued to sell to them mm. at the my, same my old price. Yes. Until one day we discover a popular eatery in Nigeria claiming to have paid a given amount to a staff. And then we were wondering, how much did you pay? We saw that it was old price. So this issue of not coming down now borders on patriotism mm. and then the system itself. It's all about corruption. Yeah. Right. It's all about corruption. So you see people who have nothing to do with dollar saying purple has gone up. Why? Because of said dollar. dollar. Yeah. So I see, <laughs> because there are other things affecting that person also. When he sells that purple, he's going to get electricity. He's going to get diesel. He's going to get PMS. So he's using dollar. Mm as the excuse for its increase in price. So that's why it's a holistic decision you have to make. Mm -hmm. And you have to sit down and look at the graph. Sensitivity analysis, if we suddenly allow this to go up, what would be the effect mm -hmm. on other things? Interesting. Okay. So that we don't have a wrong Mr. break even point. Mr. Mr. Carey, you mentioned the income from diaspora people earlier. The remittance. Yes. Let's look at that closely. Um, some countries actually train staff for export yeah. and they make money out of it. Looking at the amount of money we get from these remittances from our brothers out there, is it a, a possibility that we can consider? Because there's so much money coming from there. You say that amount, the, the amount we get from it compares with the money we're making from crude oil. So it is something that we need to pay attention to. And can part of that paying attention be actually putting a system around it and making it formal? The government is supporting this with this and this and this because it is expecting X, Y, Z amount from it. E e um, e yes, and... Um, one has to be cautiously optimistic when you want to put something like this in place. Mm -hmm. The mechanism for attracting remittances from Nigerians in diaspora is to make it convenient. And as rational human beings, they would want to put their money where they get the most return. So if it is uh, money that would not even cross our border, they would do so. By that I mean... Uh, you know, a friend living in the U.S. wants to send a thousand dollars to his family mm. for to purchase something, and you sitting in Nigeria need a thousand dollars to buy something, mm -hmm. and no border is crossed. Yes, but you the may money have doesn't actually arrive here. And so, uh, however, if the rate is such that you know we discussed earlier the difference between parallel market and the official rate. If it is within two, three percent, there is no incentive in taking any risks. I could send my money knowing that I'm getting the market rate. Mm -hmm. And therefore, rationality dictates that human beings as rational animals would then be able to use the to do the remittance. Now, with that then, it means that the central bank can begin to monitor these. And as more people move to Canada, more is coming from Canada versus the US or whatever, and more coming from New Zealand or Australia, whatever. Now, what happens is that there are some countries that long time ago, I mean, 20, 30 years ago, India was exporting its, um, its talent. Educational system remained great in India. Just like in the 60s in Nigeria, the educational system was sound. Some of us went through public, free public education. That was sound. And when you go to the U.S. or you go abroad for graduate studies, 
you've covered many of these things in your undergraduate days and therefore you become extremely competitive and so are you in the industry now that can be a strategy you know the discussion about ai this discussion about um the information communication technology all of those would add to the skilled manpower such that these days they don't even have to pack their bag and leave abroad they could be here in nigeria and be working for people abroad and be earning and dollars earning dollars and all of those need to be made so easy for them to earn that and and it will add to the economy okay yeah. let, let just one simplistic okay. uh, beyond the um, convenient remittance um, system in place in economics there is what we call invisible hand theory mm. which motivates you to channel your investment to a given geographical location or refuse to so if we want nigerians in diaspora to remit more money into the country we need to look at our ease of doing business in the country take for example you are in the us you want to send money to build malls to set up farms to do something in 3 days you've received 10 20 regulatory agencies nafta sos this world base the wole wole <laughs> or whatever you call them so are, you, are those the invisible hands they, they, yes, they, <laughs> those are not no, invisible no, 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 you can no. see them as, as, as far as when we say invisible hand theory something that other people may not see as your reason for not going somewhere oh. yeah. but you have something blocking you from going there so you feel like okay recently i read i'm sure you must have read that somebody imported a lasers uh, into ghana and there are 23 21 different uh, charges you know somebody in ghana said no we can't continue like this so if you want people to bring their money into your country ease of doing business i don't get to the airport and somebody is messing me up look the way we run our taxi system at the local airport i'm still looking for opportunity to meet kemo this is total nonsense you come in 10 50 people will say taxi here it has ac daddy where are you going even as you are walking into your car in the car park that is a very bad system psychologically it can discourage you from bringing your investment so you need to address this land titles is very key you buying property you are not getting cvo you get you are looking for approval you are not getting it you need maybe not that number whatever so these are issues okay. because people will invest when there is ease just just, just we have just about a minute or so to go but I, I feel the need for us to raise this, even if it's just for one one minute each. The challenge of communicating these ideals that we have discussed from government to the people. I mean, you are not government officials. You have given postulations, and a number of people can reason with you. But convincing people that these things are needful now, it's a significant challenge, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You mean which people are you talking from to? From government, talking about to about government. the people. Now, why yes. are you using adjective to qualify government as people? Convincing government. <laughs> that's what no, 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 saying. no. Government convincing the people that these things are needful for now. Because what are the things that are needful? For All now? these issues. I mean, expensive times. Whatever, whatever. The president, whatever it, policy, the president, policy, the president policy, called yes. it. Yes. Co- the president called it. Is very key. Exactly. Important. The president called it baby steps of pain. Correct. They aren't baby steps. They are like I, big punches. I want to suggest, for the next six months, um, my brother, the minister of finance, we are from the same company. He's an Irungo man in Abeokuta. He's my brother, <laughs> my elder brother. Um, he's doing very well. and the guy in central bank they are doing very well one more thing they need to do the two of them should have uh, with the minister of um, trade and investment the three of them need to have regular conversation with us in the country if possible monthly press briefing just take maybe 10 issues monetary policy fiscal policy this is what we are doing this will be the effect expect this graph to happen at so 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 time mm. now communication helps people to trust you thank you if you don't talk to us we cannot trust you yes sir I- indeed i think that is that is the suggestion i would make is that communication um you know i, I had a 
manager a long time ago who told me that the quality of your communication equates to the quality of your life. Um, as a nation, the quality of communication need to improve. The frequency need to improve. Quality means that you actually look at the policy and the implications of the policy. What, both positive and negative. You don't just come and talk about the positives and then the press now comes up with the negatives and the whole, the credibility of the government falls. Okay. Now, what, what we need to have is more comprehensive, more frequent, high quality communication to the citizens. Well, uh, perhaps, um, uh, I don't know, well, FECOMNET on X says, has the rebound affected prices of fuel and diesel? Well, don't answer that Well, one. we are expecting the price of diesel to go down. It started going down. Has uh, yeah. the rebound affected? It has, rebound it has started Naira. coming down. I think um, something oh, that I saw said it from 1,600 per liter to, 1, to around 1,200 or 1,250 or something like that. That was, okay. was something that... Uh, Mr. I saw, some, I, I saw Dangote, two items. One was, was the Dangote and there was something on okay. either Naira metrics or one of those. Okay, yes. For well, um, I, I think Olan Riwaju also agrees with you, uh, Mr. Adi. He says, price is not coming down borders on patriotism and the failure of the system. Uh -huh. I beg government, get work to do. <laughs> we agree. We ask for the job. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. <laughs> Lubenga Deoye, a lawyer and a chartered accountant, as well as uh, Mr. Buka Kiari, um, chairman, former <laughs> chairman of uh, the NESG and co-founder of Trans-Sahara Investment Corporation. Thank you very much Thank you. Pleasure to be for here. shedding Thank you. more light on this Naira rebound to us and um, well, giving us hope. <laughs> That's the word. And we will we also rebound. rebound. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Sunrise will return in just a moment with yet another interesting conversation. Make sure you're part of it.